everything in this bizarre play is worth talking about, including the name. The very title character, who never actually shows up, is most often referred to by American audiences as Godot. Audiences and critics in the UK, however, often say Gado, emphasizing the god as if god is the very figure they're waiting for. Samuel Beckett, who lived in France and spoke fluent French, called him Godot. In French, the emphasis is on the last syllable. However you say the name, it's impossible to forget the legendary absurd play. In the introduction of the play Waiting for Godot, two shabby men who seem to be old friends, Estragon and Vladimir, meet on the side of a country road near a leafless tree. They consider repenting, though they don't know what for. Getting bored, they consider leaving, but Vladimir says uh. they are waiting for Godot. They have asked him for something, though they aren't sure what, and they are waiting for a response. They even consider hanging themselves as a diversion to pass the time. In the rising action, Vladimir and Estragon hear a terrible cry as the boisterous Pozzo stops to eat and talk to the two men as he roughly orders around and abuses Lucky, his subservient slave whom he keeps on the rope. Lucky is unresponsive except when following Pozzo's orders. Pozzo commands Lucky, dance and think. After his silly dance, Lucky's thinking produces a jumbled speech that verges on profound meaning until it becomes increasingly unhinged in his passionate delivery until the others <laughs> angrily attack him and make him stop. Lucky and Pozzo soon leave and a boy arrives with a message from Godot. He will not come this evening, but surely tomorrow. It seems the two friends have also heard this message before, although the boy claims not to have come yesterday. They ask the boy to tell Godot he has seen them. The next day, Vladimir and Estragon return. The tree now has a few leaves on it. Estragon suggests they part ways, but Vladimir doesn't want to, reminding Estragon of their encounter with Pazzo and Lucky yesterday, which Estragon mm. only vaguely recalls. The men debate the value of thought, ultimately deciding it has little worth, agitatedly, confusingly arguing and continuing their random conversations and antics to pass the time as they wait for Godot. Lucky and Pazzo arrive again, but they are much different. Pazzo has gone blind and must rely on Lucky's guidance and support. He falls down whenever Lucky does, and both fall as they arrive, seemingly unable to get back up. In the climax of the absurd play, when Vladimir and Estragon try to help them, they also fall and cannot get up. Eventually, they help Pazzo up. Pazzo has no memory of any previous meetings with Vladimir and Estragon. In the falling action, a boy arrives with the same message from Godot. He cannot come tonight, but will come tomorrow without fail. The boy says he did not come yesterday and doesn't know if his brother, who is sick, did either. Night falls, and in the resolution, Vladimir and Estragon agree to go for the night and decide to wait for Godot tomorrow. Neither man moves. <laughs>